Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with part two of us clearing off this bookshelf. We did really well. We got rid of the first two shelves last week, but I have since been out of town. It's been all sorts of crazy. And so I, uh, have not come back to finish up these bottom two shelves. And now we need to, because essentially this is the last step before we finish painting this room. So I really need to get this done today. I apologize for the lighting. Maybe I'll turn on my ring light here. Apparently it is about to storm here in a couple of hours. I didn't know anything about this, but apparently uh, it's a very high chance for hail, which is really scary. These are really the two shelves that I am the most scared of, but I think they are going to be the ones where I don't unhaul as much as I did previously up here in these top two shelves, because I think a lot of this is more current releases. And so I know that I'm more interested in probably keeping those around. And this bottom shelf that you can't see is the majority of my Book of the Month collection. I did a video back in the spring all about all of the books that I have from Book of the Month. And I did a pretty good cull and unhaul at the time when I did that. So let's go on and get into this. Let's take these off first because I know this is probably very distressing to those of y'all who have an actually organized bookshelf. We have Loyalty by Lisa Scottaline. This was a DNF for me. If I'm honest, I don't know if this is one that I will come back around to, but I think I'm going to keep it for the time being. We have The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda, which is a book that I really enjoyed. If I'm not mistaken, I may have rated this five stars. I'm going to keep this. I really do want to have a dedicated book of the month area uh, when I do get my new shelves. I think that's probably going to be really nice and probably it would be of great value to me given how many books from book of the month that I have. We have A Hero Born by Jin Young. I have not yet read this, so I'm going to keep it. We have The Last Party by Claire McIntosh, which is also a book of the month pick. And it's one that I haven't read yet. I believe my mom read this and I think she really enjoyed it. This is a thriller that is set in Wales. I go through phases throughout the year where I really need a mystery. Mysteries really help me get out of book slumps. So I think I'm going to keep this around just in case I need one. We have In the Woods by Tana French. Part of me wants to get rid of these just because these were not the nicest editions. I got this entire series used and there was a lot of water damage on them. And so part of me would really like to get rid of this in the hopes of getting maybe a collector's edition somewhere along the way, but I don't know if anything like that even exists. So for the time being, I'm definitely going to keep this one. We have The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I have been keeping this around for a really long time, but I don't think this is necessarily one that I'm going to get around to. I don't think this is one that really appeals to me. I don't know. I'm going to put it on the unhaul, but tell me down below if you have read this and I should keep it. We have Once Upon a Broken Heart. Absolutely, I'm keeping this. I believe the second book in the series I have somewhere downstairs, so I would like to put them together. We also have Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This was also a DNF for me last year, but I DNF'd it when I was in that really massive reading slump. And so I don't even know that I gave this one enough of a chance. So I'm definitely going to keep this one around. Let's move back because I am gonna make some hard choices about this, but we have up first, just kind of a random book that I have print on demand from Amazon. This is about uh, the Victorian rediscovery of Anne Boleyn's tomb and how they were going over that chapel there in the Tower of London. This is really interesting. And because it's print on demand, it feels kind of rare. I'm definitely not getting rid of this one because I do see myself coming back to this. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even know what this was when I pulled this off the shelf. This is the Letters of St. Catherine of Siena. I'm definitely keeping this basically because I bought it in Siena, but I have also DNF'd this twice, actually. This is very dense, very philosophical stuff, but I really enjoy going to the church where she lived and worked in Siena, and I think she's a really inspiring woman. So I'm going to keep this one around. I'm definitely going to come back to this, but I think it will just be at a time when I'm more ready for something that's a little bit more densely philosophical. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I feel like I need to keep a copy of this around. This is a book that I reflect on a lot and I don't think that I love nearly as much as I used to think that I did. I feel like it's one that I really loved when I hadn't read much medieval poetry. Now that I've read more, this doesn't really rate that highly for me, but this is just one of those gorgeous uh, Penguin released classics of like classics of the North 
they were stunning and they're very hard to find and this is the only one that I own and thus I'm not getting rid of it. We have Tristram Shandy. Can I say that? Tristram Shandy? I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that again. By Lawrence Stern. I think this is a classic of the 18th century. I had a phase a couple of years ago when I thought I was really going to go and get into 18th century classics. It's never happened for me. <laughs> in fact, I feel like I really don't like stuff that was written in the 18th century, but I'm going to keep this around. This is like the really great Norton Critical Edition, so there's other writings in here to aid you when you're reading this. I guess I'm going to keep this one. We then have a copy of Dante's Inferno. This is one that I'm going to let go. I'm not a big fan of the Hollander translation, and I don't have the rest of the Divine Comedy here in this edition, so I'm just getting rid of this. I own like 10 copies of Dante. I don't need that many. We have The Lightness by Tana French, again in one of those used editions that is really kind of water damaged and aged, but I think if I keep any two books from this series, it will be these first two. So I'm definitely going to keep this, especially for the time being. We have Seven Ages of Paris. This is a nonfiction book that is a history of the city of Paris. I picked this up at Shakespeare and Company when I was last in Paris, I think five years ago. And so I'm not getting rid of it just because it's a memory. This is actually a really great nonfiction history of Paris. I wanted so much more from the medieval sections, but I do think this is really a pretty great history of Paris, and it's a great intro. We have The Inheritance of Rome. Fabulous, fabulous medieval history. I'm due for a reread of this. I think I have this on audiobook, and I really recommend the audiobook experience, but I thoroughly enjoyed this, absolutely loved it, and I think it's a really great medieval history. We have A History of the Vikings by Gwen Jones. This has been republished, re-edited, added to time and time again. I think this is the older version that doesn't have any of the updated text. So part of me wants to let this one go, but part of me feels like I should probably hold on to it. This is just a classic of Viking nonfiction. So I think maybe I'll keep this. We have Paradise Lost also in the Norton Critical Edition. I would really rather get a more updated Oxford or Penguin Classic of Paradise Lost. I don't personally feel like I need the Norton edition, but I might keep it around just because I feel like the essays that they have at the end are actually sometimes more interesting than the text they're commenting on. I think they're really valuable. I'm going to keep this, but I think the funny thing is this is not the entirety of Paradise Lost and it has someone else's notes in it. Maybe I'm just going to get rid of this one. This is Melmoth the Wanderer. This is a classic from 1820. It's a romantic classic. It's a classic of horror. I always say I'm going to save this for Halloween and then I never get around to it because that's when Victober is. And so this has got to be the year. This is not an edition that I'm thrilled by, but I'm going to keep it around. This is apparently my Viking section because we have The Warrior Queen, which is a so-called biography of Ethel Fled. Uh, this is not the greatest work on Ethel Fled, and it can't be the only one out there, but it seems like at the time that I picked this up, this was really the only thing you could find on her. I've always thought I would get rid of this. I have tried to unhaul it before, but I think just because there's such a lack of scholarship on Ethel Fled, I feel like I should keep this around. We have Alfred the Great by Asser. This is not an edition that I'm fond of. This is a really old Penguin classic, but this is a classic where Asser, who was a monk who was in Alfred the Great's court, he wrote a biography of Alfred. This edition includes things that Alfred wrote. It's really valuable. If you're into Alfred the Great, if you're into Anglo-Saxon history at all, this is really valuable. I'm not going to get rid of it because I actually don't know if they still carry this in the updated Penguins. We have The White Horse King, which is a biography of Alfred the Great and is a fantastic biography of Alfred the Great. It's really short. It's a great beginner's book, but I think it explains a lot of why there is still mass appeal and why there is still such fascination around Alfred. So I'm keeping those. This is the hard stuff right here. I am getting rid of every single one of these. I said in the first part of this, I don't like a mass market paperback. And that also goes for these old Penguin classics. I used to collect these just because I thought I wanted something portable. When have I ever needed that? When have I ever read Ovid on the go? Never. <laughs> never. And I've never had a desire to. So I'm just going to get rid of all of these. I would rather have a trade paperback if I was going to read any of these. And a lot of them are not even all-time favorites for me. So I'm going to get rid of all of them. Now that the hard part is done, 
We have The History of the Russian Revolution by Leon Trotsky. This haunts me at night. This has been on so many TBRs of mine. It's been a fantastic read when I have been reading it. I have made it, I think, 50 pages in. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've only made it 40 pages in. This has got to be a priority for me at some point. This is really interesting. It's gorgeous. I just love this edition. I love these vintage Penguin classics. It's been on many a TBR in the past couple of years, and I think it will continue to show up on TBRs. We then have this biography of Keats. I would get rid of this, but this apparently does not exist online in an ebook edition because that's really where I would prefer it. But I'm going to keep this because it is apparently the best biography of Keats there is. The Book Thief. It's going. Dark of the West. It's going. The Nightingale. Absolutely, this one's going. All the Light We Cannot See. I had a phase where I wanted to read all of this World War II historical fiction, and I had a project, actually, when I first started my channel, where I was reading through World War II historical fiction, and I gave up on that project halfway through. I just don't vibe with a lot of World War II historical fiction, <laughs> so I'm getting rid of these. We have my gorgeous edition of the first three in the Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. You can see that I have tabbed Interview with the Vampire. Why have I never carried on with this? When I reread Interview with the Vampire a couple of years ago, I fully intended to read at least these first three again, but that has never happened. So I'm definitely keeping this. Possessed by Donald Spotto. This is a Joan Crawford biography. I'm getting rid of this. Lancelot by Giles Christian. What a decadent and gorgeous book this was. I'm keeping this. Little Door, I'm torn on this one because I don't necessarily like this copy, but I think I'll probably keep it anyway. Then we have A Place of Greater Safety, which is Hilary Mantel's magnum opus on the French Revolution. I DNF'd this. Tanya from Bookish Topics and I tried to read this together a couple of years ago. We could not get through it. And I think I just wasn't in the right mind space for it. I think I needed a refresher on the French Revolution before I read this, and I don't know if I did that. I'm going to keep this because I think of Hilary Mantel as just one of the greats of all time, so I'm going to keep this because I'll definitely come back to it. We have The Odyssey in the translation by Emily Wilson. I'm keeping this because I plan on reading her translation of The Iliad when it comes out in September, so... I went ahead and picked this up sometime last year. We have Caroline Alexander's translation of the Iliad. I was not the world's biggest fan of this. And in fact, I think I DNF'd it because I really just did not like the translation. But I'm still going to keep it around because I think it's valuable to have different translations on hand, especially when you want to recommend it to somebody. But the Iliad is one of my favorites of all time, so I want to try it in different translations every now and again. Les Miserables. Baby, this is going. Prince Lestat. Should I keep this even though I recall it being terrible? I think I'm going to keep it. We have Anna Karenina. This one's going. We have Wuthering Heights that is in like this Twilight era cover. I feel like I can't get rid of it just because of this cover alone. And it's definitely from 2009 because it's the copy I first read it in. So I'm keeping this. The Crucible by Arthur Miller. I don't feel the need to have this on hand. The Lady Queen by Nancy Goldstone. This is about Joanna I, who was the Queen of Naples and Jerusalem and stuff. And it's really interesting. This was a gift from a friend. A friend of mine just thought of me when she saw this, and I feel like that's such a vibe. <laughs> so I'm definitely keeping this. Oh, dear. We have The Brothers York by Thomas Penn. I guess I'm going to keep this. This enraged me on many a level, but you know what? I might come back to this. Maybe I'll come back with with less of a Richard bias, you know? But this was really not for me. I'm still going to keep it because I want some nonfiction on the Wars of the Roses around. Madame de Pompadour, I'm going to let this one go. What do we see here? What do we see here? More mass market paperbacks. They're going. Although, you know what? The Wolf and the Raven by Diana L. Paxson is a retelling of, I think, Volsunga Saga. I'm going to keep that. And then also my favorite retelling of Volsunga Saga, Rheingold. Stunningly beautiful writing. I mean, gorgeous. Um, so we're going to keep those. These others we are going to get rid of. We have Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. Let's let this one go.
Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. I have never read. I basically picked this up because I thought this copy was gorgeous. And so I'm still going to keep it. The Raven's Head. I don't know if I've even read this, but it doesn't appeal to me. I believe I picked this up in Rome. Bizarrely enough, it doesn't really seem like a book you would have picked up in Italy, but I'm going to let this one go. Mistress Firebrand, this is historical fiction of the American Revolution, and it wasn't very good. I think I've only kept this because I bought this at the Old North Church in Boston eight years ago. It does not need to be kept. A Passage to India by E.M. Forster. I don't think I'm going to keep this either. Something just fell back there. We'll find it when we get to the bottom. We've now moved on to the bottom shelf. I'm sorry. I know you can't see it, but I cannot physically sit on the floor. I don't even think you would see it if I did that. So we have down there a dowry of blood. You know what? I'm going to keep this because I feel like I must have misjudged it. The way people talk about this makes me feel like it should have been a favorite book for me. And I'm just going to keep it because I feel sure I should have loved it. So let's put that on the keep stack. The Last White Rose by Allison Weir. How do I feel about this? I'm going to keep it. All the Seas of the World by Guy Gabriel Kay, absolutely keeping this. He's one of my favorite authors. We have The Secrets of Hartwood Hall, which is Katie, Katie from Books and Things' debut novel. I'm definitely keeping this. Demian by Herman Hesse, one of my favorites of all time. I am absolutely keeping this. We have Iron Widow, absolutely keeping this, one of my favorite books ever. Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This is one I am really torn on because I DNF'd this. And I can't recall if I DNF'd it because I was in a reading slump or if I just really was not feeling this. I'm going to keep it. We have Ice Planet Barbarians. I think I can let this one go. We have A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gabriel Kay. Chef's Kiss, one of my all-time favorite books. So I'm definitely keeping it. I don't know if I said that. Now we are in the territory of Book of the Month. And I think I have already made the decision that all of these were going to be kept. So let's go on and look through it. Uh, we have Small Angels by Lauren Owen. I'm going to keep this, even though I've heard really mixed things about it, but I don't think I've even attempted this one yet. I have something here called The Last Cavalier by Alexander Dumas, which is apparently a novel about Napoleon. Tell me how I didn't know I had this. Um, this is moving up the TBR. A River Enchanted and a Fire Endless. This is a duology that I really need to finish up, but I was really enjoying it. I love Rebecca Ross's writing, so I'm going to keep these. Star Daughter. I don't know why. This is still on my shelf. It's been years. I have not yet picked it up. It makes me kind of think, has the time passed for me? But I can't give up the cover. We have The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton. I have been torn on this before as well, and a lot of y'all have told me to give this one a shot, so I'm still going to keep it. The Kingdom of Back, I'm keeping. The Postmistress of Paris, I know I just kind of slammed World War II historical fiction, but I'm still going to keep this. A Gentleman in Moscow, a lot of people really love this. I have DNF'd this previously, but I'm going to give it a go. A lot of y'all were really encouraging in my Book of the Month video. You told me this is one that I should definitely keep and uh, definitely one that I should prioritize. So I'm going to keep this one around. We have Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. This was kind of a sleeper hit, it seems like, last year. It seems like a lot of people really took to this one in a shocking way. So I'm interested to see how I'll feel about it. A History of Wild Places. This is one I'm going to debate on, too. In fact, I might get rid of this one. These Violent Delights is one I feel like I'm going to give away and get a paperback set of this series. But until such time as I have that in hand, I'm going to keep this. Age of Vice by Deepti Kapoor is my biggest DNF of the year, I feel like, in that it's a book I continually think about and I feel like I should come back to you. I feel like I didn't give this one enough time. A lot of people have really loved this, but a lot of people have really hated it too. So I'm interested to see how I'll feel, but I think I'm gonna keep this around because I do feel like I will come back to it. The Stardust Thief, I'm gonna keep this. Then we have two books that are gonna go for me, which is Daughters of the Storm. This is a Viking fantasy that I DNF'd years ago, and I guess I've kept it around thinking that I should probably really love it, but I am just not gonna keep it around. 
And then we have Spellbook of the Lost and Found. This is one I have debated in the past because it does seem like a few years ago on booktube. It worked really well for a lot of people. A lot of people really loved this one. So I don't know. If you've read this, let me know. Should I keep this one? We have The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. I'm getting rid of this. The book that fell was East of Eden. I am not a massive fan of this copy, so I'm also going to get rid of this, even though I haven't read it yet. This is Fury Song. I wondered where this was in the last video when I found the second book in the Fireborn trilogy. This apparently also had fallen behind the shelves. So like I said there, I also want to get like a paperback set once this comes out in paperback. They have gone through so many cover changes. Uh, the series has also gone through like size changes. Some of the books are different sizes. So I definitely want to invest in that because these are all time favorites for me. But for the time being, I'm going to keep this. We have Nightmare Abbey, which is a romantic classic that is kind of playing on Percy Shelley and Lord Byron. I really enjoyed this. I'm definitely keeping it. We have The Queens of Ennislear. When I tell y'all how long I have had this without reading it, you are going to be stunned. I got this the day it came out. I mean, literally, I got this on release day in a Barnes & Noble that is no longer around. Uh, so let me see when that was. Let me see when this came out. 2018. There's no way I've had this book for five years and not read it. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep this. This is telling me some stuff that I need to prioritize, stuff that I do finally need to get around to. Last but certainly not least, these are the last books on this shelf. I have the Strange the Dreamer duology, which I am not getting rid of. I read Strange the Dreamer when it came out. I really enjoyed it. I never read Muse of Nightmares, and I feel like I'm actually in a reading mood now. I have changed so much as a reader over the past year especially. I feel like I'm in a really good space to love these. So I'm definitely keeping these around. This is really great because I have found some things that I didn't even know I had. <laughs> but I really do feel good. The majority of the stuff on this shelf I knew needed to go and I feel really good. I've made a lot of space and I've made a lot of stacks that can be given away. Uh, so that was this video. We have unhauled a lot, but we have saved a lot. And so hopefully the next video I think will be me clearing off another shelf, the shelf in my bedroom, to make way for new shelves. I just want all of the books where I can see them so that they can be sorted into genre. Whether I have read them or not, I really want a designated TBR shelf. So I'm really excited about that. But that's going to be all for me in this video. I would love to know if you think I should save any of the ones that I am unhauling and if you've been unhauling anything lately. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.